Hey guys, welcome back. Um, when we last left off, we were outside the museum. I went inside the museum, but my ex, my PS4, and it's an Xbox, cut out, so you didn't miss much, just wrote in inner monologue, so, um, I'm sorry, uh, real quick, I'm gonna show you guys what I collected as far as the ghost stories go. If we have this... The old violence tries to take over the new. I have to tell Officer Baxter about this. This could be a vital piece. Alright. the ghost stories... Salem, Salem wasn't the most exciting outside. place for a couple of rambunctious 13-year-olds. I mean, playing with my friends after school it usually required a healthy dose of imagination to spice up the underwhelmingly bleak landscape. To us, Salem's history was just a bunch of creepy stories and tourist attractions. Which just didn't exist. We, we all knew that. That's why Robbie Barnes was the laughingstock of the entire school. He, he actually believed that they were real. Looking back, I, I wish I hadn't teased him so much. Maybe then he'd still be alive. I've, I forget which one of my friends actually came up with a plan to prank Robbie, but didn't take him long to get us all on board. My job was to find an example of an old spell. It took me all of 15 minutes. The library had practically every book ever written on the subject. The next step um, involved the, the judgment house. It sat up on the hill, abandoned. Everyone said it was haunted. What made it even creepier were the rumors that Judge Hawthorne burned the remains of accused witches in the house's various fireplaces. That's, that's where Robbie comes in. We dared him to sneak into the Judgment House in the middle of the night and collect a handful of ashes from each of the fireplaces. Then he'd have to light some candles, sprinkle the ashes, and read the spell. We told him that if done correctly, the spell would supposedly blow out all the candles. If he agreed to do all this and the candles so much as, as flickered, we would promise to stop making fun of him. We could, we could see that he was scared, but... To his credit, he agreed to go through with it. What we didn't tell him was that we had set up a hidden camera to catch all the hilarity on tape. The next day, Robbie didn't come into school. We, we assumed he had chickened out and was too embarrassed to face the music. Then I heard that Robbie went missing. I felt the chill run down my spine as I retrieved the tape from our hidden camera. I pressed play and Fast forward until I saw Robbie. He was doing just as we instructed him to. Then, a shadowy figure crossed in front of the camera. Robbie turned in horror just as the camera cut to static. When the image finally returned, Robbie was gone. And the only sign that anything had happened at all was the now smoldering fireplace over in the corner. All right, let's see, and then the eternal flame, and then we'll continue on with the story. These unkept, unkept smudged, smudged, hopeless people holding cardboard signs. signs. Sometimes they have props. Baby stroller, a pet, gasoline can. Something to lend credence to the thin fiction that they need money for something other than booze. It was, um, it was a man with a need gas sign, the red gas can on the ground, that I saw when I drove into Salem six unlucky years ago today. I tried to ignore him, not making eye contact, but I was stuck at a red light and pretending he wasn't there was getting really awkward. 
So I reached into my pocket and pulled out two dollars, rolling down my window just to crack. Here you go, buddy. I pushed the money through the, the opening of the window. That was when, for the first time, I really looked at his face and what was left of his face. It was a single eyeball just looking back at me, bulging out of a charred skull. I was absolutely frozen in terror until the blackened shape of uncovered finger bones reached out to take the money. And that's when I let it fall to the ground and slammed on the accelerator. I didn't even care that the light was red. In the time since then, I've picked up pieces of the legend. A shell-shocked war veteran, unemployable and alcoholic, became a familiar sight in Salem, begging by the roadside. Citizens stopped giving him money, thinking he would just move on to a bigger city. He responded by creating one of the most traumatic spectacles in town history, setting himself alight in the middle of town during evening rush hour. Ever since that roadside encounter, I've been seeing little wisps of flame out of the corner of my eye. Like brief flashes that are gone as soon as I turn my head, sending nauseated chills through my whole body. Is this tormented spirit following me now? Whether he intends it as a blessing or a curse, I just want to be as far as possible from this horrifying specter. All right, let's go. Joy! Ronan, help! Not another step. No, not you, Rex. This has nothing to do with her, Abigail. Oh, but it does. For 300 years, we have executed the witches who corrupt our fair city. Down there. Let's go. Those who try to mask their demonic contract and leverage powers they should never possess. Just like you have. Don't you dare compare me to her! <laughs> easy, easy. Put your hands up! Help! Don't do anything stupid. Hands up! Stop what you're doing. Hands up! Do it now! Yeah, it's over Wednesday. How do I... Grabber. I'm gonna make you relive your death. The time is upon us, Abigail Williams. No. You scourge of Salem. It is time to pay for your sin. Be happening. You want to use memories against me? You can play at that game. I know the truth about your death, but I still don't know the truth about mine. Did you use? 
Did Rex kill me? Rex was my most influential. The most respected, the most feared official in town. Of course I did. Rex have done it. Rose's killer had blue eyes. I didn't use the same killer for every murder. Baxter. Why did you kill Baxter? I eventually kill all the killers I use. the ones who get close to the truth. I wasn't close to the truth in the apartment. I wasn't one of your killers. Why did I have to die? How could I? You made me kill her. If I'm going out, you're coming with me. Guys, I gotta pause it here. When we come back, we're gonna find out what happens in the end and all that fun stuff. So we will be right back. <laughs>